Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this geographers, welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be going into unit five, topic seven, spatial organization of agriculture. In this video, we're going to be highlighting some of the recent trends that have been happening in agriculture around the world. Thanks to advancements in farming equipment, machinery, transportation, fertilizers, and GMOs, we have seen some major shifts in the production of our food. Some of these shifts have been positive ones and have led to higher food production and specialization while others have been negative. Since the Green Revolution, we've seen a rise in agro-businesses and corporate farming in the developed world, which has led to a decrease in small-scale family farms. As agriculture continues to become more reliant on different types of machinery, it becomes more expensive and more difficult for a family farm to operate. Today, we can see these large-scale businesses operating farms around the world. These newly industrialized farms have created commodity chains to help support their growing industry. A commodity chain is a process used by companies to gather resources and transform them into a good or commodity and then distribute them to the consumer for sale. These chains encompass the entire production process from the start where the idea is created to the creation of the good, the design, the production, the distribution, and eventual sale to the consumer. This new industrialized farming is changing how we produce food. Not only now is our food being produced around the world, but we're starting to see that we have less of a need for people to produce the food. It's changing our agricultural density, our physiological density, and even the carrying capacity. Remember those densities we talked about in our unit two Point one video. As industrial farming grows, so does the average size of a farm. This is because agro-businesses buy up smaller farms and family farms and consolidate them under one business. These larger businesses have more capital at their disposal, which allows for them to purchase more expensive machinery, better transportation methods, fertilizers, herbicides, and pesticides. All of this allows for their crops to get a better yield and increase their profits. Speaking of profits, another way agro-businesses maximize their production and also reduce their costs is is they hire migrant labor, oftentimes used to plant and harvest crops, or they'll use immigrant populations in processing centers. This reduces the cost of labor and allows them to get a better return on their products. These changes in agriculture have led to some pretty heated debates. On one hand, we're producing more food than ever before. However, if we're destroying our environment, if we're taking advantage of migrant labor, losing family farms, some ask, is it worth it? So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And when you're letting me know your thoughts on the current state of our agricultural systems, don't forget to check the answers to the questions on the screen right now. And also consider subscribing. The next video, we're going into Von Tunen's model of agriculture, one of the most important theories of this unit. And you definitely don't want to miss it. So hit that subscribe button, support the channel, it's free, and that way you'll get notified when I post new videos. Also, if you need a little bit more help in AP Human Geography, consider checking out my Ultimate Review Packet. There's a link in the description of this video. It is a great resource. Source. It covers all the units and it'll definitely help you get a five on the national exam or an A in your class. All right, geographers, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Mr. Sin, and until next time, I'll see you online.